Tehran remains defiant about its nuclear program, thumbing its nose at the world's demands by missing a deadline over its nuclear program. So how should the world respond? I spoke about that and more with the uh, Israeli ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Michael Oren. Mr. Ambassador, thanks very much for coming in. Pleasure, Wolf. Uh, I noticed in the New York Times on Sunday, this line sort of jumped out at me. I want you to clarify. A senior Israeli diplomat in Washington said that in back-channel conversations, quote, Obama has convinced us that it's worth trying the sanctions at least for a few months. Is that true, that you're going to go along with President Obama and see if these sanctions can make a difference? Well, first of all, while we're very cautious of that and concerned about the question of time, Wolf, uh, as time passes, those 4,000 centrifuges in Iran can continue to spin out uh, enriched uranium. But we're not putting a timetable on this. We are trusting in the president's handling of this issue and his commitment uh, to reassess uh, Iran's willingness to suspend that Iranian enrichment. So far, they have rejected all compromises. And then, having concluded that the Iranians are not going to cease uh, suspending, uh, cease uh, enriching uranium, to proceed with uh, leveling sanctions on Iran to induce that outcome. I guess the question is, uh, is the government of Israel and the Obama administration on the same page as far as Iran is concerned? We agree with a great number of things with the Obama administration. We what agree. Don't you, what don't you agree with? Let me talk about what we agree on first. What we agree on that the goal is the end and complete cessation, cessation of a uranium enrichment on Iranian soil. Uh, we agree that if the Iranians do not accept a compromise package, that then the United States will join with the international community with like-minded states in developing, devising, and imposing these crippling sanctions on the Iranian economy. That we are very much on the same page on all of those Where issues. Where aren't you on the same page? I don't think there are any major differences between us on this. I think we're now re-examining uh, how we're going to proceed to uh, uh, imposing these sanctions, and we are closely communicating with and cooperating with the Obama administration. Because in recent years, there have been differences as far as the intelligence assessment of the U.S. government and the Israeli government as to how close Iran is to actually possessing a nuclear bomb. I think we're very closely communicating and cooperating on all of these issues. Are your intelligence? And our assessments are very, very similar. Is your intelligence the same as the, the U.S. assessment? Our assessments are very similar. There's another story in the New York Times today. You probably saw it on the front page about these secret tunnels. Mm. Uh, take a look behind you. You see that picture. That, there, Ahmadinejad wearing the hard hat in the front right. there. He visited a tunnel. This is not necessarily a tunnel where they're having uh, some nuclear facilities, but it would be deep underground. Mm -hmm. Does Israel have the capability to destroy uh, Iranian nuclear facilities in these deep underground tunnels? Well, we're nowhere near that point now. We are focused now on sanctions, not on destroying tunnels. We're focused on getting these sanctions up and running and to assessing their impact. And you really believe these sanctions can change the government of Iran? We believe that the sanctions can be effective. We are interested in seeing the degree to which the other important factors and actors in the international community will cooperate. I think there's a growing awareness on the part of all uh, international uh, actors, the Russians, the Chinese, that Iran poses a threat not just to Israel in the Middle East, but poses a threat to world peace. Uh, there are greater indications that the Russians are willing to come aboard. The working assumption is that the Russians come aboard, the Chinese will not want to remain ashore. And uh, we're hopeful that the sanctions can prove effective. Uh, we're also seeing these demonstrations in Tehran, elsewhere in Iran. A lot of people out on the street protesting the regime of President Ahmadinejad. Do you believe that there can be a revolution of sorts inside a, a, of Iran, regime change, if you will, by the people on the streets? Well, I don't get into prophecy about the future of Iran, uh, Wolf. What's clear now is in the aftermath of the upheaval that began last June, it's not the same Iran. This is not a monolithic, unchallenged leadership. Uh, there are great schisms within Iranian leadership and between the leadership and the people. What we do believe, for example, is that sanctions will not galvanize the uh, regime and its people will actually widen the gaps between them. Uh, to put it very graphically, if you have a cab driver in Tehran who runs out of gas because of sanctions, if before in June he would have gotten out of his cab and blamed uh, Israel, the West, uh, for running out of gas, today that same cab driver in Tehran uh, gets out of his gasless cab and blames his own government for bringing these sanctions down on him.
So I guess the, the other part of that question is, if there is a revolution, Mousavi and his supporters were to take over, would that make a difference as far as Iran's nuclear program, as far as Iran and Israel is concerned? I'm sure that a, a Iran under a, a different government would have a different relationship with Israel. For many years, Iran had a close relationship with Israel, and for certainly the first, two, at least the first two decades of Israel's existence, Iran was Israel's major oil supplier. All right, let's talk about airline security. As you know, since Christmas Day, there's been a huge uh, amount of concern here as far as security at U.S. airports for good reason. Uh, Israel is well known for having very tight security at Ben-Gurion Airport, El Al, among the most secure airlines in the world. What is the single most important piece of advice you would give the U.S. as far as airline security is concerned? I don't think Israel is the mission of giving advice to people. I think we learn from one another, and we are closely investigating uh, the circumstances surrounding the attempted destruction of this plane bound for Detroit on Christmas. But there is, Israel does present a different model for airport and airline security. Uh, Israel is less concerned with what people are wearing or uh, the way they're dressed um, or what they're carrying. Rather, we're more concerned with the way they behave. And it's not, you know, it's been widely misrepresented that, uh, that we, we racially profile. We don't. I've been, I go through that airport every other week, and very often it happens that someone, an Arab Israeli in flowing robes or, or a woman in a complete uh, hijab, uh, goes through as easily as I do. But I should know that I, as the ambassador of Israel to the United States, I get stopped every single time. And I get checked by people, many of them young enough to be my own kid, who are asking me questions, and they're looking for inconsistency in my answers. They're looking not what I'm wearing, uh, they're not looking at my ethnicity. They're looking at how I behave and how I react to certain kinds of questions. That's a different model, and certainly we're willing to share that model with the United States and other countries in the world facing this common problem of air airborne terror. The Israeli ambassador uh, to the United States, Michael Oren.